Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a video on my mixing uh, template. This is what I've been using uh, since Reason 10 has come out. It's sort of evolved over the past year, year and a half. I've made a previous video on my mixing template, but this is my new mixing template. I'll probably make one in the future about my new mixing template. This changes over time as I change, um, as plugins become available, um, all sorts of things. So this is, you know, we're in early January of 2018, and this is what I'm using. Um, and I hope this is helpful. I'm going to put a link down below um, so you can download it. Um, I've also made a video on my recording template. There'll be a link below to that. And I've made a video on how to set up and use templates if you don't know how to do that. Also down below. Be sure to check all of these out. Finally, I also made a video explaining why you should mix, master, and record in separate project files, um, at least for major songs. Um, and so, without further ado, let's talk about this template. So we're in the sequencer. This is the least exciting part, so we'll start here. Um, basically, the only things I really want to show you are that, um, that um, I've used the block mode to create a bunch of different types, parts of a song, for example, um, but I don't usually use blocks. I explained this all in my other video on recording, but what I do do, haha, ha, I said do do, um, is you can draw in sections up at the top here, and there's no m musical information associated with them, right? But you see a color and it says intro, and then I can do verse, for example, and bridge, and so this makes it really easy when you're, especially if you've got like a really long song, to just jump to a part of the song based on the color that it is, or by the words, or to left, right click and, you know, set a loop to a selection. Um, so this really speeds things up. Um, and I would recommend doing that a lot when you're mixing. So now let's go to the mixer. Let's go to the mixer. So, um... A couple of things. I've got delay compensation on so that um, parallel effects and things like that, parallel channels and uh, send effects and stuff don't phase. I've got the main master compressor on with side chaining setups that cuts out, I think, everything below 100 or 120, um, although we'll talk about the compressor more. Um, and then you'll notice I've got all of my um, or a lot of effects preset up. We'll dig into those in a second. Um, and then those go to one effects bus. And I've got these as channels. So I made an entire video about how to use effects the right way in Reason. And I think uh, you should check that out. There's also going to be a link down to that. Um, not going to get into that here, but just um, I like to have my effects as mixer channels and they go to a bus. Um, and then I'm going to have a bus for drums, a bus for bass, a bus for guitar, synths, vocals, percussion if needed, or that could be something else. Um, they all have a different color. And then what I would do is, like, let's say I had eight tracks of drums. Well, they would all sit next to the drum bus here. And then they would also all be red, so it would be really easy to tell them apart. And then, you know, if I had three tracks of guitars, they would all be routed to the guitar bus. They would all be pink, really easy to manage. All of the buses, aside from the effects bus, go to something called the two bus, which then goes to the master. And there's also a four bus, which goes to the master, which I sometimes use and sometimes don't. So the four bus, I, I don't think, um, I'll put a link to the video, and I don't think it's Dave Pensado, but um, one of the big, great mixers basically uses parallel compression on their master channel and they call it their four bus because they used to have two two buses on their old mixer um, and so this is set up to do that I'll put a link to that video um, I don't remember off the top of my head who uses it but um, sometimes it can make a song sound more punchy sometimes it doesn't um, so this is sometimes in and sometimes isn't uh, and I'll just do that as I please uh, based on my ears but it's set up so that I can get there quickly if I want. Um, I also have the inserts before the master compressor so that um, 
compressor isn't, um, you know, it's compressing everything basically. Um, and so the next thing I want to show you is the preferences section, the audio section here. Um, I don't believe you can save the buffer size um, in a reason file, but what I would do is as soon as I went into mixing mode, I would go to control and make it as high as possible, uh, which will free up your CPU a lot um, and make it so that you can um, record and give you more DSP headroom, well, but it will make it terrible to record because there will be a lot of latency if you were trying to play something and monitor it back. So it's terrible for recording to have a high buffer, but it's great for mixing, uh, or it doesn't really matter for mixing. Uh, so it'll give you more headroom for that. So now let's actually dig in. We'll go to the rack and see what's actually in there. I should also say that um, this template is pre-wired to be mapped to um, the Nectar Panorama keyboard controller. So that's all set up. I've done a review on that. It's an amazing keyboard controller for reason. Probably the best one out there. Love it. Um, there's a link down below if you want to find out more about that. Okay, there's lots of links down below. Um, so let's um, let's talk about the uh, effects real quick. These are just the common things that I'm going to use: um, a short delay or a short reverb, a long reverb, a slap delay, um, a chorus, some distortion, maybe a phaser. And then there's still a few more, there's still two effects channels that I, I could add something else on or, you know, I could change any of these. These are just sort of go-to patches that I like. And then I've got the low pass and high pass filters on both of the reverbs, sort of using what's called the Abbey Road technique um, so that the reverbs don't get as muddy. All right, now let's pop into the rack. So we'll start on the master section here. Uh, this spider audio merger splitter to the stereo imager basically is acting to be a high pass filter for the uh, reason compressor. That's what the side chain is, and that's basically it's only allowing everything over 100 hertz to trigger that compressor. I also have two other compressors here a Puig Child and an SSL Comp stereo compressor, both by Waves. They're awesome, awesome, awesome compressors. I've got a, an affiliate link down below to pick up those plugins, and you'll get 10% off if you get if you buy through that link. Um, I'll also get a 10% credit at Waves, so it's a win-win. I really like both of these, but I would never use both at the same time, and I probably wouldn't use either of these with the Reason compressor. But they've all got a slightly different sound, so what I'll do is I'll juggle between the three of them until I find one that I like, or one that seems to fit the song most, and then I'll put the rest into bypass or delete them depending on where they are in the signal chain. Um, so I will only have one of these bus compressors on, but um, I wait to figure out which one I want. Um, the next thing we have really, is, well, it's sort of the next thing. The last thing we have, but the most important thing is I've got the, um, and I just hit K there so that we only see the wires for the specific uh, device that's selected. So I've got the isotope uh, default uh, rack extension limiter between the master output and the hardware. This is just to prevent clipping, it's to prevent my ears getting blown out, that sort of thing. This is not the actual limiter that I will use to maximize the song. This is just here to sort of to protect things for now. Um, and then the you can see I've just, these are reverbs that I kind of like that work a lot of the time, but not all the time, um, and so I will tweak them as necessary. Um, then on my two bus, and on all of my buses, I have the Waves um, nonlinear summing plugin, and I know you're supposed to do buses to bus, but basically I don't put it on every channel like I should. I just put it on all the buses, and then put all the channels, and they're routed to the bus version of the plugin here on the master channel. I think this plugin is fantastic at just adding a bit of analog saturation which will give you just a little more headroom a little more uh, grit and I mean you can push it really far to do a lot of other things but it just uh, it adds a little bit to the song it doesn't change anything drastically but it does make the songs 
sound better. I've pretty much got it on all my mixes now. Um, again, there's a link down to Waves. You can get 10% off of this, and I'll get a 10% credit uh, with this. I, I need to do a full, maybe I did do a video on this. I don't even remember at this point. I think I did. Um, but you've got three different ver uh, styles of console that are modeled here. They modeled individual channels, and then you've got a drive control, uh, whether you want the original noise or bypass or whatever. Um, that's all there. It's gravy. It's wonderful. Um, and so I've got that on all the buses, and then I've got the bus version of it on my master bus, or my two bus. And then on the four bus, I've got two 1176 style compressors uh, that um, are kind of there just for parallel compression. And maybe I'll add a little low bass with the Kramer HLS um, channel, because it kind of does a weird, fun bass bump. And then just right now, the, the two bus would be the same volume as the four bus, but there's no way that would ever work in the mix. Usually, like, the regular bus would be here, and this parallel bus would be, like, just ever so slightly knocking on top of it, um, just filling it up a little bit. But this is really to taste um, again. So, you know, this is, like, an almost net... I almost never would use all of this or any of this in this way, but I often use most of this in some way, and that's why a template is really helpful. It would take, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get this all set up, um, and this just speeds it along. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy uh, the template itself. Download it, and I hope you uh, check out some of these Waze plugins because they're really great. Um, I especially recommend the NLS and... Uh, uh, these compressors, they're really good. I've enjoyed working with them a lot. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and follow the channel because um, I'm going to keep teaching you a lot about Reason and I hope to keep learning a lot about Reason from you guys. Take care.